In this video, we're going to talk about right triangle trigonometry. We're going to start off by introducing you to these formulas, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about why these formulas work, and then I'm going to talk about uh, some examples, and we will go from there. So to start off, we've got these three formulas here, and these three formulas are your three basic right triangle trigonometry formulas. So what I want you to notice right out of the gate is the variables in the formula. Let's look at the first formula. First of all, this little symbol right here looks like a circle with a line through it. That's actually a, a Greek letter that we use as a variable, and it's pronounced theta. And that's going to represent the angle in this situation. So we have some right triangles over here, and theta is representing this angle. So that's one of your variables. That's some unknown. All right, then we have sides. We have opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. Now these sides are dependent upon the angle. So the first formula we have the sine of theta. Now it's abbreviated S-I-N. It's actually, the word is sine, S-I-N-E, but it's abbreviated S-I-N. The sine of theta is the side opposite theta divided by the hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side of the triangle, which you're going to find across from the right angle. Okay, so let me put that in red pen here. If I take the right angle and I go across like that, that's going to be the hypotenuse, okay? So that leaves the two other sides for opposite and adjacent. Now this will be totally dependent upon where the angle is. Notice theta is right here. So if theta is here, the side opposite is the side opposite theta, which would be um, over, I'm just changing colors here, which would be over here. Okay, that's the side opposite theta. In the other picture, theta is located here, and so the side opposite, opposite theta would be there. That leaves the adjacent side, and that's the side that we're going to call adjacent. Okay, So there's three variables. In every formula, you've got your angle, and you've got two sides. So maybe I don't know this side, maybe I don't know that side. Okay, I've got two sides and an angle. I'm going to have to know at least two of these three things to find the other thing. The other formulas we have are cosine and tangent. So let me write this out. Cosine is spelled like this and it's abbreviated COS and tangent is spelled like this and it's abbreviated uh, N there, T-A-N, tangent. All right, so I wanna talk a little bit about why this works and what's happening and then we'll get into some examples. All right, so let's say we've got a triangle, a right triangle, and I am going to take this triangle and I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Oops, I wanted to hold its shape and make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So it's like the same exact shape, but maybe a different size. All right, so hopefully you've had a little experience with something called similar triangles. So these two triangles right here are similar because one is a, uh, a copy of the other one, but with a different um, size. All right, but this angle, whatever angle measure this is, let me call this angle theta right here. Then this angle is also going to be theta. It's going to be the same number, right? If this is 40. Five degrees, that's going to be 45 degrees. Here's your right angle, so let's mark that. And then whatever angle is this is down here, I'll just call it X. This is going to be the same degree measure, okay? But the sides would be different lengths, right? Let's say this was a 45, 45, 90. It kind of looks like these two angles are equal and these sides are equal. So let's put some side lengths in there. Let's say this was... Um, three inches and this was three inches all right and let's say I expanded this triangle here then let's say that side was five then this side would also have to be five okay so when you have similar triangles you know that their sides are proportional the sides have to be proportional if one side is five-thirds times the other side then all the sides are five-thirds times as big as the other sides okay so the sides are proportional proportional if the triangles are similar and we know the triangles are similar because the angles are equal 
How do we know the angles are equal? Well, we would have to know that, okay? In this case, I you saw me copy it and expand it and hold the shape, so we know that the sides are, are or the angles are equal. All right, so let's get back to this tangent and cosine and sine junk. All right, so let's look at tangent here for a second. Let's say I'm looking at the tangent of x, and like I said, in this case, it's 45 degrees. Okay, so the tangent of x, which happens to be 45 degrees, is the side opposite x. Here's the formula I'm using right here. The side opposite x divided by the side adjacent. So it's 3 divided by 3. Okay, the tangent of this angle over here, which I also know is equal to x, is equal to opposite of that divided by the side adjacent, so it's 5 divided by 5. What do you notice here? 3 divided by 3 is 1, 5 divided by 5 is 1. The tangent is going to be the same. If this is a 45 degree angle, if this is a 45 degree angle, no matter how big this triangle is, the side opposite divided by the side adjacent will always be 1 because the sides are equal. All right? So I know the tangent of 45 is 1. Let me just show you something real quick here. Let's pull a calendar in, or a calendar, a calculator in here. And I'm going to put in 45 tangent. The tangent of 45 is 1. All right? So the calculator is going to have all these values for you as well. Now, 45 is a pretty nice number, a nice angle, but let's let's look at something different. Let's say I had, you know, some triangle like this, okay? Actually, yeah, that's fine. And then I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to make another triangle, and I'll shrink it down this time. So these two triangles are similar. So I don't know what this angle measure is here, but let's just pick a number, let's just guesstimate, let's say it's 20 degrees, it looks pretty close to 20 degrees. Now I could take a ruler, so that would be 20 degrees, right? Okay, both of them are 20, these are right angles. So I could take a ruler and I could measure the side opposite 20, and I could measure the, this hypotenuse. Then I could go to the other triangle and I could measure the side opposite this 20 and the hypotenuse just abbreviating there. And if I took the side opposite divided by the hypotenuse of the purple triangle, I took the side opposite divided by the hypotenuse of these blue numbers over here, those are going to be equal to each other. Why are those going to be equal to each other? Well, because the triangles are similar, which makes the sides proportional. So the sine of 20 degrees is going to be whatever this number is. That's the sine of 20 degrees. That's what that means. Does it matter how big my triangle is? Nope, it doesn't matter. Any right triangle with a 20 degree angle, if you take the side opposite divided by the hypotenuse, you're going to get the sine of 20. All right, so let's punch that into the calculator in a second. What do you think that's going to be? Do you think it's going to be bigger than 1 or less than 1? Well, let's look at the picture. The opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Which one of those numbers is bigger? The hypotenuse is always the biggest, right? So the opposite divided by the hypotenuse should be less than 1. Let's check it out. We'll put in 20 sine, and I get 0.34 approximately. So this is approximately 0.34. So what that's really telling you is that this opposite side is going to be 34% of the hypotenuse every time you have a right triangle with a 20 degree angle. Now what if it's a 25 degree angle? Well if it's a 25 degree angle I get 0.42. Why would that be? If the sine is 25 degrees is 0.42. Well, Let's see if I can mess with this triangle a little bit. It's going to mess up my picture but that's okay. So let's say I took this and I made this a 25 degree angle, so I would scooch this in a little bit. I can just erase this. And let's say this is a 25 degree angle. Well now the opposite side is a little bit bigger in relation to the hypotenuse. So the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, it's still less than 1, but it's going to be a little bit bigger than if it was a 20 degree angle. Alright, so why do all these formulas work? 
similar triangles. That's why they work. So now, how do we use these ratios to figure out problems? Okay, this is where it really gets interesting. It is important to understand why these work. I don't want you to just see these formulas and think, I don't know where they came from. Some math book told me. I want you to understand that they're based in something you already know about, which is similar triangles. All right, so let's take a look at this problem here. All right, so let's say I have a triangle, and I know this angle is 67, and I know that this side is 14, and I want to figure out what that side is. Well, I know that I can use trigonometry no matter how big this triangle is, if I know one of the angles. So the first thing you have to figure out is which one of these formulas do you want to use? And that's all based on what side you have and what side you want to know. So take a look at the picture. We want to know that side. Is that opposite of the 67? Or is it adjacent or is it hypotenuse? All right. How about the 14? Is that opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Well, hopefully you said that this is opposite because it's across from the 60 degree angle there. That long side's the hypotenuse. I don't know it, I don't want to know it, so I don't care about it. That means this side is the adjacent. So now I look at my formulas. Which one of these formulas uses opposite and adjacent? Let's see, it looks like tangent. So tangent is our big winner. That's the formula we're gonna use. Okay, what are my variables? The angle and the two sides. So I say tangent, of the angle, which the angle I'm using is 67 degrees, so you plug that in, the tangent of 67 is the side opposite, which I don't know, divided by the adjacent side, which is 14. So now we have a little formula with a variable in it, and we're going to solve for x. Just get x by itself like you always have. How are we going to do that? Well, we need to get rid of this 14, so we're going to multiply both sides by 14, and those will cancel out. So x is equal to 14 times whatever the tangent of 67 is. Let's go get our calculator and see what we get. So let's do 14. And, and your, all your calculators are going to be different, so you should probably try this with your calculator and make sure that you get what you want. I had to punch in 14 times 67 tangent, but most calculators, you go 14 times tangent 67. So you should be getting 2.35, 14 times the tangent of 67. Um, something else that you want to make sure is that you're in degrees, and different calculators have ways to change from degrees to radians, but if you hit radians, you're going to get the wrong answer. So if you're, getting, if you're not getting 2.35, it's probably because you're not in degrees. So check that out. All right, so our side, let's round to the hundredth, 2.36. So once you get the equation set up and solve for x, it's just a matter of punching it into your calculator, 2.36 approximately. So that would be the answer. This is not drawn to scale. <laughs> this is a terrible picture. Uh, this... Actually, you know what? This answer makes me want to go back and look at my calculator again because this side here definitely looks bigger than 14, and this 67-degree angle looks bigger than that. I think that is a good picture. So let's go look at this calculator again and retype this in. Let's see. So let's do 67 tangent first. Ah, that's giving me the 2.35. So it hadn't multiplied it by 14 yet on this calculator. Times 14. That's 32.98. That looks like a much, much, much better answer. So this is really a good lesson in looking and seeing if your answer makes sense. You know, because sometimes technology doesn't always do what we're thinking it's doing. Let's see, what was that answer again? Uh, 32.98. All right. 32.98. That is so much better. I'll just show you what it was doing when I punched in 14 times 67 tangent, it was just giving me the tangent of 67, so then I needed to hit equals. 
and then that would give me the right answer. So all calculators are different. 32.98, that's the answer we want. All right, I want to show you how the angle can make a big difference and you get the same answer. A big difference in how you set up your equation, but you get the same answer. I think this is a really good exercise. So we know that all the angles of a triangle add up to be 180, right? So let's find this angle right here. So that angle is going to be 180, uh, take away 90, take away 67, 67, which is, what is that, 23 degrees? Okay, so this angle is 23 degrees. Now, let's say we wanted to use the 23 degrees to solve the problem. Then the 14 would be opposite, and the x would be adjacent. Okay, so we would set it up tangent 23 equals opposite, which is 14 over adjacent, which is x. Now when we solve this, we should get the same exact answer, all right? But I'm just doing this to show you how what angle you pick makes a difference on how you set up the equation. Well, there's multiple ways to solve this, but I'm just going to go ahead and um, I think I'll cross multiply. I'll show you that trick. That's kind of a nifty little... So if I think of this as over 1, then I can look at this like a proportion and cross multiply. The reason I'm doing this is because the x is in the denominator here. Some of you might be thinking, oh, I'm going to multiply by 14 or divide by 14. Well, that could work. You could divide by 14, but your x is still in your denominator. What you really need is x equals to something, so you have to get that x out of the denominator. So besides cross multiplying, one good option would be to multiply both sides by x. But if I, if I set up a proportion, I can cross multiply, and I get x times the tangent of 23 is equal to 14 times 1, which is 14. Notice that's the same result you would get if you multiplied both sides by x. So now, to get x by itself, I'm going to divide by the tangent of 23. So this tells me to find the value of x, I have to take 14 divided by the tangent of 23. And we should get 32.98 still. Let's check it out. 14 divided by 23 tangent. Now i got to hit equals. There we go. 32.98. So we got the same answer. Got the same answer x equals 32.98. So you could do it either way. It just depends which angle you want to use when you set up your equation. Now I want to show you uh, problems that you might see in your book or your homework. They're, they're not my favorite problems because, I don't know, I don't, I just feel like they're a little mis, I don't, they mislead on the point of trigonometry and the power of trigonometry. But you'll see questions like this where they already give you all the sides. And then they'll say, what's the cosine of A? So in other words, A is this angle. That's what they're talking about. It's really just kind of testing you on the formulas. So the cosine would be the adjacent, the side adjacent to A divided by the hypotenuse. So 5 is opposite A. So adjacent to A would be 12. And the hypotenuse is 13. So your answer would just be 12 over 13. Then they might say, all right, what's the sine of B? So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I go to B, and I go opposite B, which is 12, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 13. Okay, get the idea? Um, and when you're doing these, th these, these angles here, you're never going to be using the 90. Okay? These angles are always going to be the acute angles, which means the angles that are less than 90. You wouldn't use the 90 with these formulas because the side opposite the 90 is the hypotenuse. And later on when you do some pre-calculus, you, you'll get into using these kind of ideas with 90 degrees. But for basic right triangle trigonometry, we're just using the acute angles. All right, well, I hope that helped and gave you a good introduction to trigonometry. Um, and good luck. Review this video as needed.